What's up? Uh, Bridger Frederick here, coming to you from once again inside my closet. And that is because there's no good audio inside my house. It echoes like crazy, all hard corners, hardwood floors, and it just doesn't sound great. So we're in the closet. And this is my channel all about healing and living with a spinal cord injury, being happy, healthy, and wealthy post-injury. And someone mentioned in a comment on my previous video that um, I could still, like, I could walk again. And no, I can't walk. I'm fully in a wheelchair, T10, paraplegic, but I do plan on healing to the point where I can walk, run, jump, hunt, hike. Um, I want 100% and then some 110% full regaining of all capabilities prior to injury. And I do know that the whole convergence of knowledge, technology, and medical advancement is coming to a point where I do believe that that is possible for someone who um, is injured neurologically in 2022 especially with the huge rise in understanding of healing and the incorporation of you know eastern western medicine all together and how that's kind of becoming normalized and how we're just as a global society with the web and all the interconnectedness and everyone you know making youtube and instagram and tiktok content about their issues and working together and solving i think we're really accelerating the pace at which um, we can figure things as complex as neurological damage out. And I think as a race, as a whole species, whatever is it's called, as a society, the world itself as humans, whatever you want to call it, is coming to a point where we really understand that to heal the human body, you have to heal the entire system. I like to think of the body as a little world, equally, you know, its own little universe, completely complex, a really complicated system where if you, you know, influence one part of it, it affects the whole global mechanics and function. And I think we're really starting to meld that together and see that in order to under, like, fully heals something like a spinal cord injury, you have to take care of the whole organism, organism, excuse me, all the pillars of health, you know, um, the physical, the mental, the spiritual, all, you know, feeling loved and taken care of, you know, I really think in order to have the power physically, mentally, and spiritually, to heal a spinal cord, the person doing it has to, like, self-actualize. You have to realize all of those other Maslow's hierarchy of needs until you get to a point where you're able to really pull in that, that focus and connect with whatever you want to call it, whether it's the universe, God, the, you know, collective consciousness, Whatever it is, you know, there is something else out there that you can tap into and you can have your own philosophies on what that is. But without the belief that there's something to tap into, you know, you're going to be really, really uh, handicapped, no pun intended, as far as the healing process goes. At least that's my opinion, not a medical doctor, even close to I am, you know, a high school and college dropout who is much more entrepreneurial and adventure minded than education minded. I do enjoy educating myself in my narrow little lanes that I enjoy and can't apply directly to my life. But I, you know, I don't have advanced medical knowledge. All I know is that we are a, a system and that in order to heal one part of the system, it's a lot easier if the whole thing is in congruence and functioning smoothly. So 
what I really, that's kind of all just a tangent. It's not really the main crux of this video. What I really want to talk about is my experience going back to work and how I wasted so much time and fell so far behind in my recovery process because of fear. Fear has stopped and hindered me in my life. I can't even imagine where I would be. I probably wouldn't even be spinal cord injured if I hadn't succumbed to fear prior to injury. I just never would have been in that position. Fear has steered and controlled my life more than any other emotion, at least in a negative way. Uh, fear is so powerful. It's probably the, I don't even know what else stops us or hinders us in life. Like other than fear, what is it? You know, fear of failure, fear, fear of judgment, fear of getting hurt. It's always, at the end, it's always fear that stops us from achieving what we want. And, you know, I had a lot of fear that I did, wasn't even necessarily recognizing about going back into the workplace, about going, and it wasn't necessarily that I didn't really want to work. I just had no idea what to do. Like, I didn't have any applicable skills to specialize in anything because I had, you know, I did construction and agriculture and really was my superpower was just being the hardest manual labor worker you can ever imagine. Like I would learn a ton inside the industry, but like that my thing was like, if no one else is going to do it, I'm going to do it at as far as something at work goes and I'm going to do it faster. I'm going to do it longer and I'm going to do it better. And that was my thing. I didn't have any real, I don't know, um, packaged skills because I had so many jobs all for short periods of time. You know, I've been traveling the world for, um, the most critical like career building time in a young person's life at like 21 to 26, rather than accruing skills and experience, I was kind of just messing around, doing whatever I wanted, not uh, worrying about work or, you know, useful life skills at all. Um, not life skills, I guess I had was getting plenty of life skills, but not necessarily easily marketable ones. So back to the fear thing, I didn't know what I was interested in. I played around with a lot of stuff and I could definitely probably had made it in some sort of content production if I could have possibly stuck to a schedule, been highly motivated to do it, and just put myself out there constantly as I have started to now. But fear stopped me there. I don't even know what I, like, I was really afraid of, but afraid of judgment, afraid I wouldn't do it right, afraid the production value wasn't high enough, and it's not high. Like the production value, I'm sitting in a closet on my phone with this as the only microphone recording device, well aware that the production value is and could go much higher, but I had to start somewhere to get over that, that, that just false start, that not jumping all the way in, you know, I'd record stuff, I'd film and I, I'd start to edit, but it was just too much to coalesce and pull together. So I just have to start at this place at the foundation. And then as I go, just layer onto it. And um, then I was fearful of like what I was really interested in, what I'm passionate about, what I've always had an eye for and have enjoyed researching and have enjoyed learning about and just never pulled the trigger on was real estate. I want to learn everything I can about real estate investing, about real estate sales, and I really want to learn how to help other people make sound real estate investments or just real estate purchases in general. And I want to understand the whole process so I can also build a large real estate portfolio of my own. I want to do uh, land and possibly some developing down the road, but I definitely want to do some, some multifamily housing and I don't know what else, but those are like my main, my main interests. And then selling luxury homes. I am obsessed with uh, watching like 
the luxury home tours and i've been watching those for years and years it's just something i really enjoy i love that developers and builders and wealthy individuals come together and build these just fun fantastic homes i just think it's so cool and that the creativity is out of this world and so that's always been something that i was tending towards but i just had never pulled the trigger and then post injury i thought about it and thought about it but i just thought of all the reasons i couldn't do it you know the, only one percent of houses in america are accessible that means so there's only one percent of houses that i can sell no, I, that means I'm going to have to improvise 99 times out of 100. I'm going to have to figure something else out. But that was a huge hindrance. I thought of all the barriers to um, filming and everything. There was just a million reasons that I couldn't be a real estate agent. And it was really disheartening because it was something that I want to do. And I just found... 150,000 reasons that it wouldn't work in a wheelchair, that it would be too hard, um, that it would just be, you know, I researched it and saw all these perfectly able-bodied people and like 80% of them are failing within their first two year, years, like, and then most of them after that, real estate agents are just marginally producing. And I don't want to marginally produce. I want to make a lot of money. I want to write a lot of deals. I want to uh, being paralyzed is very expensive like i didn't give a crap before i always wanted to be rich and be wealthy and be able to take care of my family and do anything i wanted but anyone who knew me prior to injury knows that i was also like very happy sleeping on couches like eating whatever and doing whatever like i was pretty non-luxurious i didn't need anything you know i was happy sleeping outside i slept outside a lot in my life i've slept you know in tents and on the ground outside with no tent for uh, weeks and months at a time in multiple different countries like i don't didn't need luxurious comfort comfortable living but post injury like i want to be a lot more comfortable than before it is you know i live all of my life in discomfort and pain and struggle and that's not complaining i'm just it's you know everything's a lot harder when you're in a wheelchair and i don't want to you know layer other just normal life struggles on top of that i want to have all my bills and everything taken care of if i go on vacation i want to make sure i get a nice hotel that's fully handicapped adapted and if it's not and i mess up i want to have the money to be able to go get a different hotel you know it's just there's so many hidden costs of being paralyzed and making it easy now you can always get away like you know you can get away with budget anything there's you know it's possible but money just lubricates everything and make it makes it easier so i want to figure out a way to have it and I believe the best way to make money in life is to make other people money. So I want to learn everything I can about the real estate world and get tons of clients and tons of people to buy or sell houses through me and in turn uh, make them stable, say, like know enough that they're getting sound investments and they want to come back to me and then also, you know, funnel plenty of money up through the brokers I work for. And that's a basic premise. What I'm saying is not a tenant of real estate. It's like a tenant that I've always lived by and has served me really, really, really well in the workplace. And I think it's what's going to allow me to succeed in the real estate world. So, First, I guess I should before it. So we're going to circle back to what I think that tenant is. But first, I just want to say I got over the fear and I got over the fear because I got this solar job and was having to, you know, I've only, I didn't have it for very long, but I was having to get into um, houses and improvise and think about, you know, and was like having to Google 
uh, maps houses and look at them from street view and see if they had too many steps and you know work with the people who own the house to get into it. it's pretty complicated but I it made me realize that it was possible and then in my attempt to generate leads I went and met with some real estate agents and talked to an awesome awesome agent Angel uh, Croson I believe in DeLand Florida and just had a quick conversation with her, you know, 15 minutes or so, and something just ignited in me, and she really motivated me to go get uh, my real estate license. So I'm completing that right now. We'll have the, it's so easy. Like it's, if you're good at flashcards, it's, it's easy. It's just, it's almost just like a vocabulary test basically. And so doing that, and then I am hopefully got a, real estate job lined up and we'll update more on that but i got over the fear and realized that um everything in life no matter what i want to pursue is going to take a lot of adaptation it's going to take a lot of problem solving and overcoming challenges and people are more than willing to help if you've got the right attitude if you're trying as hard as you can they're going to they're going to work with you. And especially if you follow the next tenant that I was getting to that's treated me so well in my working life beforehand. And that is I am always there to make the person running the company money. Always. Since I was 15 years old and got my first actual job to when I was 11 years old moving sprinkler pipes in alfalfa fields and all the way up through 15 bucking hay for people, no matter who was employing me, I was there to make them money. To, I understood that I was a tool and an investment and a machine within their company and that my job was to print money for them through effort. And if you do that, then you are by and far like if that's your idea of working, because if I wanted to take on the responsibility of owning a business and all of the risk and everything, then I could do that. But I chose not to do that. I chose to work as an employee. And so if I'm making that choice, then that's the choice. That's just the only option I see. If you're going to choose to be an employee, then you should be an ATM machine for the person that you're working for. Like you should do everything you can to make them as much money as possible because then you're going to be irreplaceable as an employee. And I mean, nothing else is going to propel your, um, whatever it is, your position or propel, I don't know how I'm trying to say this. Nothing's going to move you ahead as an employee faster and than that, than taking on more responsibility, than taking on more and more and more, just grow in, like, who cares what your role is? create new roles for yourself. Just to, whatever the person ahead of you is doing, just start taking over their job and doing more and more and more. Don't ever say, you know, I, I don't have to do that. That's not in my job description. I, like I got, I was getting paid $7 an hour or something, working 60 hours a week at a horse ranch when I was 15, grinding away. I mean, running all day, eight, 12 hours, like running from job to job with not, not with being asked, like my bosses were totally laid back. But I mean, I was like, I was treating it like, like a workout, like sprints. I mean, like grinding, I'm telling you grinding. And I never asked for a raise. I think the highest I ever got after two years was 850. But like, I'm just paying it forward. Like I'm there to make you money. If I needed a raise at that time, I would have asked for one. I would have, but I didn't. I was working after I would get done with my shift there, I would go and buck hay and I would make a ton of money doing that. I would just bucking hay for the uninitiated is there, um, you know, people with horses would get a big stack of hay delivered. Like imagine like a 20 foot high, just column of hay bales. They're 80 to 120 pounds. You know, rich ladies with horses don't want to basically no one, no matter who you are, but that's the main demographic of, you know, people who own horses and the and pay to get their hay bucked is 
they don't want to move 120 pound bales and go stack them in their barn. So that's what I do. I just grab them and hoof them as fast as I could to the uh, to the barn. I made great money. Sometimes I'd make, you know, 400 bucks a night doing that for four hours. You know, 100 bucks an hour when you're 15 years old is so badass. It's the best. And yeah, so that's what I intend on doing now in real estate for everyone who gets involved with me. Like I want to make every client money. I want to make every other agent I work with money. I want to make the broker that I work for money. I want to make every investor money. Like that is the name of the game. And then it all comes back to you. You just have to not think about yourself first. And I guess I'm just kind of going off on this because I've worked with a lot of people in a lot of different jobs, had a ton of employers. And I think that this is a very rare trait for an employee to have like a toot my own horn here i don't think it's very common that someone goes into the job and says what can i do for you i want to make you rich and i don't expect anything in return i just know that i'm going to bring you so much value that it's just gonna it's gonna come to me it's gonna you're like i'm gonna leave you no choice you're gonna offer me anything and everything and whatever to stay and continue um can continue doing that because it's the single most valuable thing an employee can do. So if you are out there um, and you do have a spinal cord injury and you're nervous about going back to work, th thinking of all the obstacles, the cathing, the bowel program, the schedule, the travel, the accessibility, whatever it is, just abolish all that. Abolish all of those reasons that you can't erase them from your mind and just start solving the problems one by one and ask for help. Be upfront with your employer. Like I told the broker that I'm trying to get on with right now, like Monday and Wednesday mornings off limits, Saturday mornings, very negotiable. That's my physical therapy time. And then, you know, as we're going to negotiate salary and commission and in that meeting, I'm going to be very upfront. Like there is going to be times where I just have to not go to work. There's going to be doctor's appointments. There's going to be complications. There's going to be whatever there is, you know, there is so many hardcore health implications and hurdles to get over with having a spinal cord injury that there's just, you know, some days are bad days. Like I'm, but that doesn't matter because I'm going to bring my, I'm going to bring the value no matter what. I'm going to find a way to make up for it. If I, and 2022 is the best time ever to have a spinal cord injury and want to make money because there's like 99% of all jobs. Once you go in, get trained, get really good at it and, um, you know, have a more advanced role inside the company, you know, it might be a long road to get there you might only be able to do one or two days a week and have to build up slowly or whatever but once you really grasp a company and make the effort to learn the industry whatever it is you're probably going to be able to provide a lot of value from home from a computer um, f away from the actual workplace and you know remotely there's so much opportunity right now and if um, you know you're struggling to decide on something feel free to reach out i'd be happy to you know i'm pretty good at analyzing what you know asking a few questions and getting what your skills are and i've looked at every job every career every possibility that you can do without a specific specialized college degree and so i might have some insight might have some suggestions might not who knows but feel free to reach out the comment section is um the best place to find me obviously i have instagram at bridger lee frederick and tiktok at bridger lee frederick and facebook at bridger lee frederick but i am not good at replying to messages on there not yet at least comments am probably even worse i just social media is like i love consuming it but i have never really interacted much on it because it just gets so time consuming i will on youtube though just because I love YouTube so much. I think it's the greatest platform ever. I get all of my information. It's saved my life. That and podcasts. Podcasts are fantastic too, but I've never interacted with a podcast. Like I don't even know 
where to find comment sections on podcasts, um, like Apple podcast. I'm sure they're there, but I've never, um, never seen them. So yeah, kind of a bit of a rambling one, but, um, you know, the most random podcasts, most random videos on the internet have given me the most value. I've found me at the right moment at the right time. And I just hope that this can do that for someone else. That would be obviously all worth it. Not that it was that hard to sit in the closet and spill out my thoughts about work, but either way, you know, hopefully it it falls on some some ears that need it because I know I was really, you know, curious about going back to work, all that, you know, it's so much easier when you relate to someone else who's going through what you're going through and what we're going through as people with spinal cord injuries, people with any neurological deficits is devastatingly hard. It is, as a, someone who sought out doing difficult things and taking the hard path for my entire life, I can assure anyone who has any doubt that a spinal cord injury or a serious neurological injury is without a doubt one of the hardest things that a human being could ever go through. And I have paraplegia. Quadriplegia is, you know, a level up. It's even more difficult. It's takes an even stronger person. Like it's, there's always more levels, you know, there's always someone suffering more than you are, no matter what you got going on. That's the craziest part is you don't realize how good it is until it's bad and you don't realize how bad it can be until it's you and it always feels like the worst in the world you can't imagine someone else suffering more or it being harder for and you can't imagine it you're like even like it because it's so beyond the maximum that you can tolerate that it just doesn't seem possible for it to hurt or be harder or be like more effort or there to be more hurdles but it really is, uh, you know, it is all a mentality game. It's about compartmentalizing things and shaping your perspective to suit your goals. I can't stress that enough. It is a slow grinding process to rearrange your neurological pathways inside your head in a way that when bad things happen or seemingly bad things happen or obstacles come in our way to look at them as a roadblock that you can go around rather than just a dead obstruction in your path. You might have to, you know, you might have to chop your way down into the ditch and roll and crawl through mud and trees and rocks and thorns and drag yourself up a ravine on the other side, it might be a lot harder than if that road had just been paved and clear all ahead in front of you. But, you know, it's the worst thing you can possibly do is stop and wait and sit there and just wait for someone to come and clear the road for you. Because it's never going to happen. And, you know, it might. You might be the lucky one, but who knows how long you're going to wait. And in that time, you know, you might wait hours, days, weeks, months, years. And in that time, you're sitting there waiting for someone to clear the road, clear the path so you can forge ahead. You could have crawled around it, got up on the other side, built a new vehicle from scratch and been a thousand miles away or at your destination, arrived fully enjoying the fruits of your labor and your goals and whatever else it is. But That is my little spiel for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I truly appreciate um, you being here. It it, it means a lot. And I hope that you didn't feel like this was a waste of your time and it was enjoyable or delivered some little nugget of value to you. And I will be on here um, consistently doing these little recordings. I'm going to be interviewing guests soon and then I really will graduate to the point where I can um you know I'm probably gonna have to hire an editor I just hate editing videos so much Uh, I will do it eventually if I have to but I want to 
get to the point where I'm doing workouts and, you know, taking you out to see how I overcome working because there's going to be tons of obstacles and it's really inspiring to watch that. For me, it is. I like watching how people um, in a similar situation to me overcome uh, their hurdles so I can apply what they do to my life and expedite things. But that's it. That's that's all she wrote for the day. Thank you so much again for um, for being here with me. And I, I wish you a happy, healthy, and wealthy evening, morning, afternoon, night, where, wherever this lands for you. And I will, I'll catch you on the next one. Over and out.